Hey guys, I'm Shandy Finnessy, Miss USA 2004, and I'm interviewing with thepageantguy.com. Well, first of all, when I made the decision to compete for Miss USA, I uh, made the decision to give it 110%. Um, up to that point in my life, I feel like I had done whatever it took to do amazing, but I never gave 100% to anything. And even in college, I graduated with my undergraduate degree in three and a half years, but I never gave 100%. I would give whatever it took to get great grades to be an honor student. I never gave it 100 So I devoted an entire year, and I did nothing but preparations. I was kind of obsessive about it, but I had a really great support system with my mom and dad that helped me get through it and really encouraged me and supported me through everything. So when it got down to myself and South Carolina, who was first runner-up, um, I just I felt so at peace knowing that I had done everything I could up to that point. And right before they announced who the winner was and who the first runner-up was, she leaned over and whispered in my ear, this crown's going to look beautiful on your head. And uh, that was so sweet, and I don't know if she was just sort of doing it as like Miss Congeniality or... Uh, but it was so kind of her to have said that. And then when they announced me as the winner, um, there was a moment of like the typical pageant reaction. And then like, I did it. Paula Shugart, the president of Miss Universe, actually says that they were all kind of gasping because they put the quarter of a million dollar Mikimoto crown on my head. And I'm jumping and like pumping my fist like Rocky um, in four inch heels, which probably isn't the wisest thing to do when I'm wearing a South Sea Pearl diamond and platinum crown on my head. But it was just the epitome of the American dream and working so hard for something and achieving something that you put your mind to. Well, I gave up my title and took about a month or two and just kind of relaxed at home with family in Missouri and then made the trek out west, moved to Los Angeles. And um, I told myself that I would be here for three months. Um, I was very fortunate. After a month and a half, I landed lingo with Chuck Woolery on the Game Show Network and have just stayed really busy since then. Um, I also did Play Mania, which was a late night live game show for 19 months, um, two hours, totally live TV, no script, no teleprompter. Um, taught me a lot. It was really difficult in the beginning, especially because we had no commercial breaks in the beginning. And so it was just talking for two hours. And uh, it was really, really difficult. But after a few months, you just sort of got into the swing of things. It eventually started feeling a little bit more like an infomercial, though, of like, we slice and dice and shop and only nine ninety five. And so it was good when it did end because um, it got so structured into this little format. But it was so much fun to be part of. Um, I did a blackjack show for CBS called The Ultimate Blackjack Tour, which ran uh, two seasons worth. And then shows on, like, TV Guide, E!, Probably the most well-known show that I was part of was Dancing with the Stars, season four. Um, it didn't last very long, and I'm really disappointed. wish I could go back and try it once more. But now, just staying busy with modeling and, um, for some reason, some silly movies that I've been in, Shark Dopus, woo, and now Piranha Conda coming up, and then Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler. But um, And just staying busy with that. I just got a new agent, though, recently. So... Hopefully, things will start rolling back in in the hosting world. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm a klutz, and things just happened to me. And I was at an event somewhere in New York. I don't remember what the event was for, but I do remember I was wearing a pair of pants that had a zipper in the back. And it was a dinner, and then I was supposed to get up and speak in some sort of auction. And the whole time during the dinner, I'm trying to eat, and people kept coming over. Can I get a photo? I'm so sorry. Can I take a picture? Sure, sure. So I'm standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. Somewhere in the process of standing up, sitting down, the zipper burst on my pants. Did I know it burst? No. How did I find out? One of the wait staff came over while I'm standing up taking a picture and was like, um, your pants are busted out. And I felt back there. <laughs> and sure enough, like, it split open. And of all the underwear I could have chosen to wear that day, I don't know if it was laundry day or what, but I was wearing a pair of underwear with kitty cats on it, all wearing sunglasses. And so I was like, what? Like, Miss USA should be wearing, like, something sexy. No, kitty cats with sunglasses. So I ran with Esther Swan, who's the PR person for the Miss Universe organization, ran to the bathroom. I'm like, what do I do? And she's like, girl, we're going to make it work. And she had this, like, really decorative scarf around her neck. And she took it off, and she's like, put this around your waist. And it had, like, all these tassels and fringe hanging from it. So I tied it around my waist. I look like a gypsy. 
Um, it was so bizarre, and it didn't match my outfit at all, but I hung out the rest of the night and did the rest of the performance and went home and threw those pants away. <laughs> um, by the way, really quick on lingo, so much fun. If you saw the outtakes that we had, people never gave five-letter words. They would give, like, eight-letter words, and you're like, flower? Really? That's, like, not five. Okay, so um, cause. C-A-U-S-E. Well, if it's not cause, we eliminate those two vowels, three vowels. So we either have an I or an O. So, um, or a Y, perhaps. Sometimes Y. Um, so how about ka? Oh, that's not even a word. How about um, uh, uh, how about cider? C I D E R. Color, C-O-L-O-R. No, there's no R, but possibly color, so I can get the O in there at least. So colon, C-O-L-O-N. Gross. 